So this is an, a chilled water system example that incorporates air-cooled chillers and dry coolers. Um, Laura, do you want to comment on this one and maybe some anecdotes that you might have seen in other climates like this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, essentially, you know, this this is something that we use many a time, um, lots of different climates, and and again, the, the dry cooler really is going to allow you to provide that free cooling during the winter or solar season. Uh, in this particular case, they've got air cooled chillers connected to the dry cooler so that when the it, when it's a favorable condition outside, the dry coolers can um, provide that cooling, um, that, that source of heat rejection there. Um, it, it's pretty simple in terms of a uh, hydronic system. This is going to be probably one of lower first cost hydronic systems, I would say. And so you're, if you're looking for a hydronic system, and um, this is probably one of the first places that you might start without getting into a lot of fancy bells and whistles. Great. That's yeah, and, and I'd add one, one, one other option that is uh, available in the marketplace uh, for these particular type of air-cooled chillers is they, they have uh, some heat recovery options and referred to cleverly named as a heat recovery chiller. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, you can use that again as a methodology for uh, shifting some of the uh, heating demand uh, uh, from the cultivation rooms to other portions and on the dehumidification side of it. Yeah, that's a really good that's a really okay. good point. And I just want to add that oftentimes something like that wouldn't have a huge upcharge. So by the time you're into a hydronic system, you might as well spend the extra money on um, a, a better chiller option like that to get some of that heat recovery. 